welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson. This is Lesson 6 for January the 6th, 2019. We begin a new unit today, Unit 2, entitled Loving God by Trusting Christ. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Steadfast Love. Our devotional reading comes out of the Gospel according to St. John, Chapter 15, uh, verses 12 through 17. Our background scripture is taken from 2 Thessalonians, Chapter 2, uh, verse 13, and Chapter 3, verse 5. And then from the second epistle of John, verses 4 through 11. And we'll be studying today from uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 5, and the second epistle of John, uh, verses 4 through 11. Our key verse reads, This is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. That's taken from uh, the second epistle of John, verse 6, and the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to grasp what Paul and John said about the importance of holding fast to God's love. Secondly, to aspire to love others uh, as an expression of your love for God and God's commandments. And then thirdly, to embrace the responsibility of relating to fellow believers in a genuinely Christian manner. We have three outlines today that will be the focus of our lesson today. Uh, the first outline is entitled Prayer Request. And then our second outline is entitled Not a New Commandment. And then our third outline is entitled Watch Out. So we certainly thank and praise God for uh, beginning uh, this new unit today in a new year 2019 we say happy new year to all of you and we certainly thank and praise God for uh, keeping us and allowing us to be able to see yet another day uh, as well as another year we have a lot to cover uh, in our lesson today so we hope that you will uh, grab your Bible and uh, be prepared to uh, take some notes uh, as well as some scripture uh, that we will provide um, uh, that is connected with this lesson but this is a very profound lesson uh, in terms of uh, coming from two different uh, books uh, the first book uh, we have verses from 2nd Thessalonians uh, chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 5 and then we have the second e Epistle of John verses 4 through 11 so we will be looking at uh, two pastors if you will two overseers uh, who are uh, uh, tasked with the responsibility of looking out for uh, uh, the flock if you will looking out for the believers uh, so I want to enter the lesson today by just raising two uh, points about this lesson that I hope you will take note of uh, from these uh, pastors perspective uh, they have evaluated uh, what the congregation needs uh, what they need to do about it and also we want to uh, fast forward to 2019 what do we need uh, as people of God and so I raise two uh, things today two answers if you will that will be associated with this lesson the first thing that uh, the early church uh, believers needed was encouragement we also need that today uh, and then the second um, uh, thing that the early church needed uh, from these two pastors Paul and uh, uh, John uh, the revelator uh, was warnings they needed to warn the congregants of some issues and we need to be warned today um, and I don't want to get into too much of the biblical context for this lesson because it is quite extensive but we do want to raise um, uh, some points about isms 
uh, and you all have heard that term, uh, these are various opinions. Uh, and today we are dealing with three particular isms that are associated uh, uh, with this lesson. And I want to give you those individually and, uh, and then just give you a brief summary uh, of what the early church was uh, facing and how these two pastors, overseers, uh, sought to uh, tackle this issue. The first ism is Gnosticism. Gnosticism. Uh, uh, Gnostics assert that matter is inherently evil uh, and spirit is good. As a result of this presumption, uh, Gnostics believe anything done in the body, even the greatest, uh, the grossest sin, has no meaning because real life exists in the spirit realm only. Uh, that's Gnosticism. Uh, the second ism that is associated with this lesson is Judaism. Uh, and so many early Christians were Jews and some of them saw Christianity as the next step of the Jewish faith, a sort of super Judaism. Such teachers believe that all aspects of the Jewish law applied to the church, uh, even to believers of Gentile background. Uh, this included circumcision uh, for the males and adherence to Jewish food laws uh, for every Christian. The era of uh, Judaizing was a belief that salvation required keeping such laws. Uh, and also uh, I want to tag Acts chapter uh, 15. You might want to look at that. Uh, uh, is it associated with uh, Judaism and some of the laws? And then the last uh, ism that uh, is associated with this lesson uh, is Docetism. Docetism. Uh, this threat originated with Gentiles and their Greek uh, philosophical traditions. The term Docetism comes from a Greek word uh, that means to seem. Uh, the primary tenet of Docetism was that Christ's sufferings were only apparent. Uh, they only seemed real but were not. As one writer sums it up, Docetism maintained uh, Christian affirmations to the contrary that Christ's existence was mere semblance without any true reality. So three different heresies uh, uh, at work in the early church um, and so we hope that you will do your uh, due dil diligence and, and background uh, research of these two uh, uh, three issues if you will uh, these three isms that uh, uh, the believers were uh, being uh, encouraged in both cases in both settings um, uh, the church at Thessalonica you might see reference, uh, you will see reference in Acts chapter 17 uh, verses 1 through uh, 10. And so both of these pastors were warning their uh, 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 fellow believers to watch out for these false teachers. Uh, and it's very important as I was studying this lesson, I was thinking about uh, uh, the, the uh, essence of Christian education. We need that. Uh, as people of God. They needed it in the early church and we need it today to arm ourselves and what these false teachers really uh, exploit uh, in both settings early and, and current is they're counting on the ignorance of the hearer and I don't mean to offend anyone by uh, saying that but we need to arm ourselves educate ourselves with understanding uh, all of these heresies that shift away from uh, the the established norm of doctrine uh, are, are still at, at, at work today. Uh, uh, you might hear people today saying we need to do something new or we need to rethink uh, uh, what we have been taught. And uh, uh, both of these pastors, Paul and John, are encouraging their hearers to stay the course. They're encouraging the, the audience to stay uh, and hold fast to the traditions. There's nothing wrong with understanding 
tradition in this uh, uh, concept uh, and understanding what you have been taught about Christ, knowing the works of the cross, uh, 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 the, 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 the workings of the blood, the body. Uh, we, we do need to understand those things uh, in its entirety. That way we won't uh, succumb to uh, the dogma, if you will, of these uh, teachers, uh, these heresies that were uh, uh, taking hold of the early church that were, uh, um, they were a threat. Uh, and so we need to make mention of that. Uh, also, if you have an opportunity to look at Acts chapter 20, Paul meeting with the Ephesian elders, uh, he was warning them to look out for the flock. So two things are going on here, as I said, and we're going to get right to this because there's a lot to cover. But we want to be able to be encouraged by what we're reading, uh, and be, but we also want to be warned by what we're hearing. So we're going to begin today uh, from the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 uh, uh, verses 1 through 5 and uh, uh, this is the Apostle Paul here and I want to read this from the King James Version. The Bible says, Finally brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith verse 3 but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil and we have confidence in the Lord touching you uh, that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And then verse 5, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for uh, Christ. Uh, thus concludes the reading. Uh, we want to note here, uh, you might see this, you will see this in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, part of the reason that uh, the Apostle Paul is writing uh, to the church at Thessalonica in this case is that there was a chronic issue of idleness. Uh, there were people uh, who were not working, who were just uh, busybodies, if you will, uh, not progressing uh, in terms of their spiritual growth and knowledge. Uh, and so Paul was writing this issue had already uh, was well underway uh, but it seemed as if the believers were not making progress. Uh, I want to give you, uh, uh, direct you to the book of Hebrews, particularly chapter 5 and chapter 6. Um, and I give you that because the writer in that case uh, with the Hebrew Christians, they were not making progress. They uh, fail to adhere or to learn the Christian ABCs, if you will. Uh, and so the writer of the book of Hebrews was very upset uh, that these Christians were still drinking milk when they should have been eating meat. Uh, and so I want you to look at that at your leisure as we associate that with this lesson today. And so uh, uh, Paul is requesting uh, that the church pray for him, pray for his uh, uh, companions, those of, uh, uh, who, who uh, have been subjected to conflict as a result of, of, of preaching the gospel. And I don't know if you understand this about uh, pastors in this light, that we experience a lot of conflict a lot of persecution uh, in terms of sharing our faith or delivering the gospel and so that was going on then uh, in the early church and so uh, it was going on uh, it is going on now so Paul requests prayer uh, for the success of the gospel uh, and for the protection of those who bring it uh, Paul faced all almost constant physical danger during his years 
uh, of ministry. So this text, uh, along with, I want you to look at Romans chapter 15, verse 30, verse 31, and also 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11, and then Philippians chapter 1, verse 19, uh, shows how much uh, Paul relied on the prayers of God's people for the continuation of his ministry and not for his own survival. Uh, I, I just thought that is noteworthy. Uh, the Apostle Paul thought more of the gospel than he did of his own life. Uh, uh, that is profound. Uh, Jesus, uh, uh, our Savior, he died for the sake of the gospel. He shed his blood for the furtherance of the gospel. I, I want you to understand that, that the mission of the cross, of the body, of the blood of Jesus Christ, did not stop at his death. It proceeded. It progressed. I also want you to look at Isaiah chapter 53. And so that death, as a, as a result of Christ's finished work at the cross, fruit is still being born out of that out of that death, out of that event. And so what we have to understand about the gospel is though, even though uh, uh, the, the, the leaders and the pastors are being uh, 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 persecuted uh, for the sake of the gospel, the seed is so powerful that it still uh, will yield fruit even if the, the, the proclaimer loses his or her life. And so Paul is asking for prayer. Uh, and we have to do that today. They had to do that then. And we have to do that now. We have to pray for those who labor and co-labor in the gospel because the threat of the, the heresies uh, uh, and the physical danger uh, that is associated with preaching the gospel is still uh, uh, something that we have to face each and every day. And so we want to be able to appreciate here, Paul is saying these individuals are unreasonable uh, and they are wicked and they don't believe. This is the purpose of or the interpretation of this heresy uh, uh, is to pull away from uh, uh, the gospel of, of Jesus Christ and to promote and to seek its own. Uh, and so what these teachers were looking for is was for followers, uh, a support, if you will, for uh, the rhetoric that they uh, uh, were teaching. But Paul is saying here that he had confidence uh, 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 in them, in the Lord, uh, in the believers, that they would do uh, uh, currently and continue to do what God has commanded us to do. I don't know if you've ever thought about this uh, in this way, but do you know we rely on the faithfulness of our preachers and pastors to continuously deliver the message of Jesus Christ? And, and make no mistake about it, every pastor, every teacher, leader that stands before God's people will share uh, if you ever uh, desire to ask them what did they go through and what are they going through to continue to preach the gospel. And so this is what we have to do is applaud and encourage and pray for those who labor in the gospel. So Paul, uh, as we read through uh, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, we see the same confidence uh, expressed to the churches at Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 16, and Galatia, uh, uh, the church of Galatia. I want you to look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 10. Having such confidence, Paul began by specifically requesting prayer for the evangelistic success. That is huge. Uh, we need to pray for people who are spreading and sharing the faith, not just locally, but globally. We need to pray for the evangelistic success uh, that those individuals that God have dispatched 
uh, 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 all over the world will be successful in laying a foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is our charge today uh, as witnesses. And so we have to pray for its success. So whatever hardships Christians may endure, Paul's overriding concern was for the spread of the gospel. He also prayed for uh, uh, prayed for his and his companions to be delivered from uh, wicked and evil people. You know, we we have to deliver the gospel uh, under duress. Sometimes we are uh, in hostile environments. Uh, we are in dangerous situations. Uh, 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 we have to go through many obstacles in order to preach the word of God. And so uh, we are subjected to people who are practicing evil, uh, even in the house of the Lord. And you might say, well, nobody's literally killed. But do we know how to kill the influence of our pastors and our leaders? Are we engaging and undermining them so they fail as opposed to succeeding? So. Uh, we have to remember these these principles here because these two pastors are not against one another. They are working in tandem to support uh, both one another's truths as well as one another's uh, 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 gospel message that the Lord had given to each of them uh, uh, respectively. So we want to keep those things in mind. So whether Paul is is preaching in Thessalonica or writing to uh, the church at, at, at Thessalonica and, uh, and John uh, is writing uh, from Ephesus, it doesn't matter. They are working the same ministry. They are concerned. Their love, not just for the people, but for the love of the message of the gospel is deep rooted and this is what they are issuing through their message and through their writings uh, is to promote and continue to support these efforts uh, so the individuals who encounter these heresies are protected from a shipwreck of the faith a shipwreck of of the hope shipwreck of the gospel of the free uh, uh, message of grace that is being offered we need protection uh, through the power of God, through the messengers that God sends to us. I hope this is making sense to you. Uh, but uh, these pastors are exercising the correct pastoral duties uh, uh, in, uh, entrusted to them uh, and charged to their hands that they are looking out for those who they oversee. And we have to do that today. So every message may not be a blessing, uh, quote unquote, that we get some uh, tangible thing. But we have to listen so we can arm ourselves uh, and protect ourselves through the message that God gives to our pastors to give to us. I hope this makes sense to you. The question here in the quarterly is consider missionaries and evangelists who share the gospel in foreign lands uh, um, and here in the United States. Uh, how often do you pray for their effectiveness, protection, and perseverance? And that's very important today. We pray uh, that we pray for uh, the protection uh, of, of these evangelists and these missionaries uh, and so we hear stories all the time where uh, uh, these uh, 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 evangelists have been abducted these Christians have been uh, kidnapped uh, uh, they have many have been killed in foreign lands trying to obey and do what the Lord has given them to do so this is dangerous work uh, for us today and so we need to consider these things uh, uh, as we go forward but the second outline is entitled not a new commandment this is the second epistle of John verses 4 through 6 and again I want to read this from the King James Version uh, I rejoice greatly this is John talking now uh, that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, 
but that which we had from the beginning uh, that we love one another and this is love that we walk after his commandments this uh, is the uh, is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning ye should walk in it so what John is doing he is uh, taking the concept of love and attaching it to our obedience uh, to Jesus Christ this is how uh, uh, and this is what defines our love, if you will. If we say we love the Lord, how is that manifested? Uh, you might see some writings, and uh, and you will again see writings in uh, St. John chapter 14 and also chapter 15. And so uh, John is saying here that he uh, has found that there are uh, some uh, walking in the truth, but the encouragement is... Uh, uh, in his letter here is to stay in the truth stay in the love keep the love keep the faith uh, 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 keep the word of God and he says this is nothing new see we have to be careful about things that are new uh, things that come on the scene to be uh, a little bit more contemporary than our ancestors uh, 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 exhibited among us but uh, we have to remember the foundation uh, that was laid among us uh, by uh, our patriots, our Christians, that uh, 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 friends and family members that have gone on to be with the Lord, but they have laid a foundation uh, that, that, that we should hold fast to it. So when we hear things uh, that are new, that there's some new doctrine, that there's some new way to be saved, that there's some new aspect. Uh, uh, there is nothing new under the sun. And so we have to be careful not to embrace these types of heresies, uh, even though they may be uh, 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 well followed by so many. Uh, they may have great speakers and great pe preachers and, 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 and just uh, uh, an awesome throng of folk. But that doesn't mean it's accurate. That doesn't mean it's founded in scripture. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean that God sent it. And so we have to be careful today. So how do we discern? Uh, the first epistle of John chapter 4. Uh, John says over there. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are of God. We have to know how to test. We have to know how to discern how, uh, how to uh, 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 pick apart these things. So uh, I've always said to people over the years, uh, be found with a Bible in your hand. When you sit in these churches and you listen to these messages, even as I encourage you to do today, open a Bible and follow me through the scriptures. Uh, I'm not giving you anything new. I'm not saying anything new. I'm giving you what thus says the Lord. And we have to make sure that we're able to uh, discern these methods and these truths to see if they are of God. Uh, 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 to see if we, uh, we, we are being uh, led astray. We have to know these things. And thank God for these pastors, Paul and John, who God have blessed to write and encourage their hearers to watch out for these things to stay the course don't move don't shift uh, 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 so as we get closer and closer to the coming of the Lord these things will continue to rise so John opened his letter by addressing the elect lady and her children uh, some Bible scholars believe that he was referring to a particular lady uh, others however see it as a metaphorical name for the church they base their thinking on the fact that the church is portrayed elsewhere uh, as Jesus' bride. So we are not certain to whom John was writing. It may have been to a particular church, uh, a circular letter, or just a general letter for uh, general consumption. But what is the content of his message? Uh, uh, we don't want to get hung up on who he's writing to. We want to ask ourselves the question, can we benefit uh, from his writings and so uh, as with any enterprise not everyone who started the walk uh, of the Christian faith stuck with it 
Some just quit while others were not loyal to the truth of the gospel message. That was happening then and it's happening now. We start with the Lord and then we quit. We start in ministry and then we quit. Uh, uh, we, we start uh, being faithful and then we stop. And these things, uh, we have to be conscious of what is happening to us. Uh, and so uh, these things are still actively happening to us today, happening to believers that we have to check on them to see what happened. Uh, why did you stop? Uh, uh, attending church why did you give up on the Lord why did you stop uh, 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 attending Sunday school why did you just shut down like that and so uh, a lot of times uh, what I have found over the years is that we have encountered other teachings uh, we have encountered other churches we have encountered other uh, uh, missionaries we have encountered people who offered us something that we thought would be better for us and so we we went in that direction and so uh, I've made it a point over the years to ask individuals when they're leaving a particular congregation I, I probe them in this fashion I ask them where are you going who told you to go how long will you be gone what are you going over there for all of these things we have to have a clear understanding because if we don't have direction and goal to our uh, our goings and our comings you will encounter uh, these false teachers who will give you direction because you don't have direction so we want to be able to keep those things uh, in mind this is this is a very powerful lesson today I see very uh, many parallels uh, between the early church and 2019 so the truth for every believer is to love one another uh, John was reiterating that he had already written um, in 1st John we can see 1st John uh, chapter 2 verses uh, 7 through 11 uh, chapter 4 verses 7 through 12 love was the identifier of the early church uh, you can also see St. John chapter 13 uh, verses 24 through 35 and then St. John chapter 15 verse 12 uh, and then verse 17. Next what John did he defined love to differentiate uh, from the other prevalent forms of love in the Greek language uh, that were based on emotion John told his listeners that love was defined by their obedience uh, to God's commandments. So walking in obedience was the same as loving and living in God. Uh, the reverse is also true. Loving and living in God would result in a life of love. So I want to keep that in mind. So the question is asked here, if you were talking to a new Christian, what are some practical ways uh, you would tell the person to hold fast to God's love in his or her daily living. So for me, uh, your personal prayer life, your personal study life of God's word, uh, and then I want to add something here. Also, we have to monitor the environments of ungodliness. Uh, and I know we don't talk about that a lot, uh, but we do uh, need we do need to monitor uh, uh, the the consumption, if you will, the spiritual consumption of, of of these environments that we're in that don't edify. Uh, they don't do anything for us spiritually. They don't add anything to us. Uh, uh, in a spiritual way, in an educational way. We have to monitor those things. Uh, so we're not saying that um, you should shut down and not go and all these kinds of things, but we do need to be aware that we are spiritual people and we need to be aware that we should be goal-oriented. We should be directed by the Holy Spirit into the things that we are engaging in these are practical ways uh, and certainly if it was a new convert as the question is asking us that is a very pivotal time for that new individual uh, that new convert who is learning and 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 uh, uh, growing in the knowledge uh, and so there's going to be a lot of questions for that new convert 
uh, uh, if they made the right decision or not. So we have to be careful uh, uh, that uh, we have been set apart. We are sanctified people. We have been uh, declared and made holy uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ to be set apart for his purposes. And so we need to understand that. Uh, and certainly a new Christian needs to understand that, that it's a time for that individual to learn. Uh, this is something that the Apostle Paul did with the church at Corinth. Uh, they had to learn. They were saved, but they were acting as unsaved individuals. So Paul was writing to them to help them understand that they needed to learn some things. Uh, uh, about the Spirit of God, that they were coming out of the world and they were learning how to adapt, if you will, to the new Christian life and the new Christian way. So we hope that makes sense for you today. And then our third outline is entitled, Watch Out. This is from the second epistle of John, verses 7 through um, 11. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. Verse 7 says, I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. And I just want to pause right here. There are a lot of deceptive practices. There are a lot of deceptive messages. There are a lot of deceptive people uh, that we encounter uh, in our churches today, on television, on the radio, uh, uh, worldwide uh, evangelists, they're all over the place. And uh, these individuals, some of them, they deny uh, the incarnation of Christ. They, they deny, uh, as John is saying here, that Jesus came in the flesh. Uh, and so uh, there are many issues around that. And so these uh, individuals... Uh, John is saying they've already gone out into the world. Uh, and so if that person, uh, if we encounter that person and that doctrine, uh, uh, John is saying very clearly here that that person is a deceiver and an antichrist. What does that mean? Just against Christ. And so uh, verse 8, watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. So when we encounter these false teachers, there, there will be sacrifices that we would have to give up. Uh, will we give up everything that we have learned and that we have been taught over the years? Will we throw away all of the doctrine that our ancestors and our forefathers taught us uh, in terms of, 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 of uh, this Christian way? Do we throw all of that away? Uh, and so when we do that, that, that is the seed of our hope. Uh, if Christ did not come in the flesh, then we have to discount everything that that he did in terms of uh, being justified uh, 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 before God. So uh, we, we, we go down this path of losing hope uh, in, in the world, losing hope in the finished work of Christ, losing uh, hope in the confident expectation that he will return. So we have to be careful. Verse 9, anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father uh, and the Son. So when we deny one or part of the Trinity, which the Son is, then we don't have any of it. Uh, we cannot deny uh, Jesus Christ and have the Father. That just cannot happen. Uh, we cannot deny uh, the Holy Ghost and have the Father or the Son. They are one. And so uh, uh, there's a lot to be said here um, in terms of the Trinity, uh, which we won't have time to do today. But, but if we separate one, we don't have any part with God. So we have to keep those things in mind. And that's... Uh, the seat of a lot of these uh, heresies, they they remove one from the equation. So if we remove uh, Jesus Christ as an example from the equation, who would be the propitiation for your sins? Who would be the atoning sacrifice? Would you be fit to to uh, uh, substitute Christ as uh, 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 on your own that you could represent yourself? 
Think of an, a person, a person who is representing their self without the benefit of an attorney. Uh, do you know more than the attorney? Do you have more skill and ability than the attorney? No, you do not. So we do not have uh, the ability to represent ourselves. So when we remove Christ, then we don't have any representation. So we have to keep those things in mind. Uh, verse 10. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not do the, do not take them into your house or welcome them. So in this context, uh, I'm sure there were a lot of house churches and uh, folk meeting uh, in other folks' homes where John is saying this today. And uh, what does this mean for us in 2019? Well, we should not keep company with those types of individual individuals. Uh, accepting their practices uh, uh, and their traditions as gospel. Uh, I want you to look at Psalm 1 and you have time. So we have to be careful about these things um, in terms of bringing these individuals uh, into our circles as to uh, keep company with them and so have fellowship. There is no fellowship uh, within with individuals who deny uh, uh, that Jesus is the Christ and so these are teachers these are people who are supposed to know uh, uh, Jesus Christ but they do not and so we have to be mindful of that and we have to be uh, able to pay attention to what these individuals are introducing to us what is the benefit uh, for you and for me and then verse 11 John says anyone who welcomes, welcomes them uh, shares in their wicked work. Again, we want to be mindful of our affiliation and our participation. Uh, certainly if we are going into unsavory circles, we need to be on a mission of evangelistic effort. We need to be on a mission of sharing our faith uh, 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 in these different circles. Uh, everybody that we encounter uh, will not be saved, will not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins, but that's your next best job. That's your next best challenge as a Christian to share your faith with them. But John is warning them here, uh, since these um, antichrists were smooth in their oratorical delivery, John warned his listeners not to be fooled. If they were, they would lose everything for which they labored for. He did not want them to mess up and lose out on their reward and glory. So, you know, it's very important as we start out as Christians, that's the way we are to finish. Uh, we start out believing Jesus Christ. Don't worry about the crowds and all of these other things. Stay with what you started with. Uh, a good gauge to know if what you are uh, doing and what you believe is accurate, what fruit do you possess? If it worked enough, if the gospel worked enough for you to get saved, why would you need to change that? If God worked in your life in such a way that you were delivered, that you were healed, that you were set free from the bondage, from the chains, why would you go back? Why would you think that there was something new? You've already tasted. You've already seen that the Lord is good. You've already experienced his redemption. You've already become acquainted with his healing, with his power, uh, uh, even the power of the resurrection. So what does that tell you about the accuracy of what you believe? That's very important for us to understand. It's what you have received. Uh, this was something that the Apostle Paul asked uh, the disciples, some disciples in, in Ephesus in Acts chapter 19, he asked them a pointed question. He said, have you received since you believed? They said no. So if you read that, they had only come as far as John the Baptist gospel. They hadn't made any further progress. But after meeting Paul and believing what he told them and they made further progress in terms of their doctrine, they received the Holy Spirit. So that's very important. What have you received from the truth, from the knowledge of the truth that you possess now? 
as a deterrent to those things that promise you something else that you've already received. So we hope, trust, and pray that we have given you something to think about, some scriptures to read, and I'm sure when you get into this lesson from both of these pastors' perspective, you're going to find much more than I was able to deliver to you today. But I hope, trust, and pray that we have encouraged you today and that we have warned you today to watch out. God bless you and keep you as my prayer. And I want to offer this closing prayer from the quarterly. Wonderful God, we thank you for being a God of love and truth. We ask that your precious Holy Spirit continue to rule in our lives so that we will reflect Christian love in our daily living. It is in your loving Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.